to Finance Conversations. This is the 58th, the 58th episode of the Merging Life and Money Show, and I am delighted to be here. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, <clears throat> Mary Jo Caesar. I help professional women bridge the gap between life and money by teaching them uh, the relevant skills and knowledge they need to take control of their money, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining in today. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Uh, welcome. And welcome and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. Today, my um, guest, my special guest, Eric Dudley, uh, let me bring him in, uh, will be talking um, about indexed universal life insurance or IUL. And that is a tool that can be incredibly powerful for retirement planning. So Eric, uh, welcome, is an independent experienced holistic financial advisor whose specialties are retirement planning, investing, uh, I should say investing solution, you know, the whole investment um, um, a solution, and life insurance. Eric is also the founder and president of Dudley Financial Group and a regular guest on the Merging Life and Money Show. I must note as well that uh, one of um, Eric's company's main, ob main objectives is to help uh, their clients build their best tomorrow while protecting them today. Welcome, Eric, to the Merging Life and Money Show. And welcome, followers and listeners. Thank you for joining in today. So I will ask that you grab a pen and um, a notebook uh, because it is going to be an interesting discussion. And remember that uh, to make sure to share it and to talk, to discuss it with further you know, further with friends and family members because it is about sharing values that could benefit others. So if you have any comment, as I said, make sure to put them in the chat and we will get back to you on those. So as you may know, the main objective of the Merging Life and Money show and my very strong why is to empower as many women as I can with what I know about money and finance. So as far as the show is concerned, let me start by saying that retirement planning is one of the most crucial aspects of a healthy and happy life. It is an event that you plan for mm, decades in advance. And as we all know, there are so many investment options out there to choose from, and it can be quite overwhelming for a lot of people. So let me start with a few disclaimers because we're talking investment here today. Everything um, said in the Merging Life and Money show is for general, informational, and educational purposes only, okay? And is not intended to constitute legal, tax, accounting, or investment advice and should not be relied upon for tax, legal, investment, or accounting advice. So for all of that, I will strongly recommend that you consult with your own tax, legal, investment, and accounting advisors before engaging in any transactions. Okay, so back to the business. Um, so, Eric, I'm told that the indexed universal life insurance or IUL for short can be a useful retirement planning tool, right? So today 
we will look at what it what it has to offer, right? So first, first Eric will tell us what it is. He will define an IUL. Then he will explain the whole concept of indexing. And lastly, he will address the pros and cons of this hybrid product. So before I turn to Eric, I just want to say that my understanding of this um, IUL, uh, Indexed Universal Life Insurance, um, or life, it's a, it's a policy, whatever we call it, is a product that lets you, quote unquote, self-insure or invest in your own retirement without the need for tax deferred retirement plans like IRAs and 401ks. I understand as well that it is a product that can provide a guaranteed rate of return and optionally be guaranteed for a certain number of years. So Eric, help me and my audience understand this marvelous product. <laughs> well, hey, MJ, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm excited to be able to talk about what an IUL is. It's a uh, it's interesting, you know, whenever you're talking about retirement planning, uh, you really should think about it in buckets. That's what a lot of planners want to do. They, they'll put things in buckets. And, and one of the main buckets that you want to be able to concentrate on today is what is your bucket that's going to have tax-free income? Now, I think that if I were to ask anybody in this audience, uh, are taxes going to go up in the future or down? I think most people would say they're probably going to go up. We owe $30 trillion in debt. And people are wondering in Washington how you're going to pay for stuff like that. And the, the answer is probably going to be raising taxes. And also, a lot of people have this misconception that in retirement, they're not going to be spending much money. Uh, well, the truth is you're going to be spending money on different things, but you probably will be spending as much or more because you're going to have a lot of health care costs. Um, so whenever you get to that point of retirement, do you really want to have your standard of living go down? Uh, if you don't want to have your standard of living go down, then you need to have plenty of mo money in your tax-free income bucket. Because remember, everything that's in your 401k, unless it's a Roth 401k, is going to be taxed. Everything that's in your IRA, unless it's a Roth IRA, is going to be taxed. So every, you're, we're talking about possibly anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40% of whatever you take out will go to the government, not you. OK, so it's really smart to have as much money into tax, the tax free bucket as possible. I would definitely recommend, you know, seeing about Roth 401ks if you qualify, but you may not because Roth 401ks have a, a standard amount of money that you're allowed to make. And then after that, you're not allowed to use it. OK, also, a lot of companies don't offer Roth 401ks. So an IRA, IUL can give you a lot of these options that these other other plans can't. And it's all going to be in that tax-free income bucket. Okay, so what is an IUL? Well, it's an insurance policy, but it's not a normal insurance policy because you're not really taking it so that you can have a death benefit. Now, I sell lots of insurance policies for that specific thing, for death benefit, you know, term life coverage, you know, things like that. And it is so that just in case, you know, while a person's earning income, you want to make sure that there's a death benefit to cover the income loss. That's great. It's, it's, it's certainly you need that. But this is not the, the tool for that. OK, this is a tool so that you can have a tax free retirement income. OK, so the death benefit is there. And it's a, it's a benefit for you. But if it's properly structured, an IUL will have as little death benefit as possible because that's where fees are generated in the death benefit. So if you have as few death benefits, as little death benefits as possible, you can have as low fees as possible. And this becomes a really a fee friendly uh, product if it's structured right. And so that they're, all the money that's actually put into the plan or most of it will be able to go right into the cash value of the product, which means that will be something that you can withdraw later for tax-free income, okay? And then, uh, of course, the whole point is to be able to take out money through what is called policy loans from your cash value 
that you have in the policy. Now, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be taking loans out against myself. But if it's structured right, you don't pay it back. You just don't have to pay it. And in the end, because of the the in interest that you can make, because it's correlated to the markets, not actually in the markets, but it's not like you will ever actually lose money if if you have some interest coming in from market gains. Okay, so so it's a really uh, interesting product. It's very different, uh, and uh, we'll get into other things in, as we go. Okay, that's um, that's quite interesting. So basically. It is an, um, a life insurance policy, right? Um, which um, I would say dressed up like an investment or is it an investment dressed like an insurance life policy? And I, I know there are reasons for that. And as you explained, the main reason for this is the tax component. Um, um, the fact that I, I guess insurance products do not attract um, taxes as investment do. So in looking at the whole thing, um, and by the way, thanks for explaining it. It, it seems as if an IUL is a product that encompasses a lot of the most important retirement planning um, tools uh, all in one, right? And, uh, and as we continue the conversation, um, I would love to know if this is a, a, an investment vehicle um, that one um, must consider before any other retirement planning tool. Okay, but, um, you know, what's your take on that? Or, or do you want to address it later? <laughs> no, 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 that's a great question. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think that there's a time and a place for everything. You know, if, like, for instance, okay, we'll... I think we're talking about 401ks next week. So, uh, so let's, let's, let's dive into that just for a second. If, if somebody offered, if I were at a job where a 401k was being used and, and my employer offered to match 6% of my income in a 401k, would I not do it? Of no, course no. not. I would, I would of course take the free money. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, and so, you know, there are times and places where I would invest in other things. An IUL has a, is a, is a great product though, to supplement that because, you know, if there, there's a lot of, a lot of advantages to it that the other products don't have. Of course, like I said, if, if the, 401k person, uh, employer is offering free money, I would take it. Sure. Uh, also Roth IRAs are, are great products because again, that's a part of your tax free income bucket. So I would definitely recommend that. But, uh, an IUL is something to look at too. And a lot of people don't know what that is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I, as I said, always, if I, when I talk insurance, um, as so many people have been burned with, um, insurance policies, uh, either because they purchased something that they did not understand or they thought that they purchased, but at the end did not offer them the benefit that they, they were expecting. So um, so I'm, I'm saying that with that in mind. So it is a, a, an insurance policy that has a, an investment component. So thanks for explaining that. Um, so... Now, um, the name of it is Indexed Universal Life, right? So can you tell us, uh, can you explain the whole concept of indexing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the best parts of it, okay? Uh, a lot of people are afraid to invest in the markets. I know my father uh, never invested anything uh, because he was afraid of losing money in the markets. He always did CDs instead. And back in the 80s, of course, he could make 16 17% on a CD. Oh, we yeah. can't do that these days, you know? And now we're getting 1% if we're lucky. Uh, so, uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I understand uh, people are kind of nervous about the markets. And, hey, right now, people should be kind of nervous about the markets because – there's a lot of volatility. Um, but what would what would you say if I told you you can make a market return of, let's say, 10, 12 percent and never lose a dime of your money? Would you like that? Well, I would like that. But I would also tell you that that's too good to be true. Well, I know. It sounds like, it. It sounds like it. But that's exactly what indexing is. OK, in this uh, in this product, you have what are called caps and floors. OK, and a cap means that you can only make X amount of, of interest. OK, so if a market that you're 
correlated to. So let's just say, for instance, your your indexed universal life policy is correlated to the S&P 500. You're not actually invested in the S&P 500. You're not going to lose money if the S&P 500 goes to zero. Okay. You won't lose a dime. Okay. However, if the market goes up 10 to 12 percent, you could make 10 to 12 percent. OK, at the end of the year, it does. It's not a daily thing. A lot of them are structured to where that it's they'll look at it year by year. So on if you started January 1st, January 1st, the next year, if the market's gone up at 10 percent, you get 10 percent. And if you're capped at 10 percent and the market went up 20 percent, you get 10 percent. But it, on the other hand, if the market goes down 40 percent and you have a zero percent floor, that means you got 0% loss. So you're having no risk at all. So let's just give an example. If you had $100,000 invested and the market in one, one, one year goes down 30%, the, net, at the, the one year later, you still have $100,000. And the same thing, if the market goes up 10%, now you have $110,000. So you get the gain, but you don't suffer the loss. And what's cool about it, too, is once you've got the gain, that is now your new floor. OK, the yeah. next year, you're not starting back at one hundred thousand dollars of your floor. Your new floor is one hundred and ten thousand dollars. So the next year, if it goes down 50 percent, you're still at one ten. If it mm-hmm. goes up by another 10 percent, you just made another eleven thousand right. dollars. So it's really nice to not have that risk. And a lot of people are risk averse, especially if you're talking about pe- to people who already have saved quite a bit of money, okay? If they already have a quarter million dollars or half a million dollars already saved up for retirement, they don't want to risk things. They don't mm-hmm. want to have that, you know, possible downturn that could cost them half their half their savings. Instead, they like the idea of not having risk, but still getting some returns. Yeah, so I hear you. And I, I'll be remiss if I, if, if I don't speak my mind on that one. I mean, it, it sounds like um, such a good line, you know, like, okay, uh, regardless of the market going up or down, you're not losing anything, but there must be some uh, a, a fee attached to that. There must be um, something because, I mean, I, I can't, otherwise everybody would have been buying that stuff, right? <laughs> so, 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 but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a few in a few moments when when you address the the, the pros and cons, but I, I just want um, um, my listeners and my audience to to understand exactly how that works, right? So again, uh, it is a typical. It's, it's it's a life insurance policy that you buy, and that is has a guaranteed rate of return, as you said, which would well. I guess um, this could be what you call a cap, right? It's, it's not right. a guaranteed rate of return. It's saying that you can make up to that amount up to, if up the to. if the market goes yeah. up. Oh, so, yeah. for instance, so for instance, if mm-hmm. if you have a cap at twelve percent and right. the market goes up by eight uh-huh. percent, well, you only get eight percent. Okay. okay. If the market goes up by two percent, you get two percent. If the market goes up by forty percent, you only get twelve percent. Okay, because okay, right. it's capped there, yeah. but there's no guarantees for it. The well, only okay. guarantee there is is that it will you will not make less than zero percent, and you will not make more than twelve. So basically, your, your whatever your premium is, you're not going to lose that. Exactly. Uh, so the play is just on the the interest part of it. Right. So if it doesn't return whatever twelve percent, as you said, and your cap was that, you will you will get whatever it returned. Mm-hmm. And, and and conversely, if it goes up to 14, you're still getting 12. That's a, that's okay. exactly right, yeah. All right. So um, so I just I just wanted everybody to understand. As I said, I have spoken to so, so many people who got burned on those type of uh, universal products. So I, I want to make it clear that, you know, whatever you decide to do, make sure that you ask the questions and you understand what you are buying because that's where it's at. And very often, uh, uh, the the person who is selling you that that product may may know their product, but they they, they probably don't know how much you know or how much you don't know about it. So it is very very important. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing so that people could understand that they ought to 
educate themselves so that when they meet up with a, a life agent or whomever it is, they have the knowledge to ask the relevant question and they are able to make informed investment decisions. Okay, over to my last uh, question for you today, Eric. Um, and we kind of started to touch on that. Uh, what are the pros and what are the cons of, of such a product? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm going to go over the, all the pros first. There's a, there's a good many of them. And then we will go over the cons, which we'll talk about the fees in just a second. Um, the market returns without a risk to principles got to be one of the biggest ones. Okay. So like I said, the, the caps and the floors, if you don't have any risk and you can still make a good return, that's a fantastic pro. Okay. The second one is um, just like with an IRA uh, having a, Con, a contribution limit every year. Uh, I believe it's up to $6,000 until you're 50, $7,000 a year after the age of 50. That's not a lot of money that you can invest um, per year. Uh, in, an, in a 401k, uh, it's a lot more. It's more like $20,000, right around the $20,000 range. But still, if people want to invest more, they're not allowed to. OK, uh, mm-hmm. this has no contribution limit. You can invest as much as you want. So let's just say you're a doctor. You have you have a lot of money that you want to be able to put aside uh, when you're 35 or 40 and you're you have tons of patients and you're saying to yourself, I want to retire when I'm 55. Hey, you can put away a half a million dollars. You could put away two hundred thousand dollars a year. It doesn't matter. OK, um, also, there's no age restriction for for withdrawals with IRAs. And also with 401ks, you have to be uh, 59 and a half years old to be able to start taking out your your income uh, or else you face a 10 percent penalty in, mm-hmm. in, 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 and also be you know, you're going to be taxed as well unless it's a Roth. Um, but no, no, there's no penalties for it. You can start taking the money out anytime you want because it's your money and it's only taken out in loans. So it has nothing to do with um, your, any type of income, according to the government. Uh, also, there's no recommended uh, uh, required minimum de- uh, deductions, uh, so or distributions. I mean, uh, so like when you're 70 and a half years old and you have an IRA, let's just say you haven't been touching it because maybe you don't need it. Um, you have to start taking out money because uh, of the RMDs every year. Uh, again, this does not have that. Uh, you don't have to take it out at any time. It's up to you. Um, of course, it's also tax uh, tax free income and growth. So during the time that it's growing, it's not, it's not taxed and it's not going to be taxed whenever you take it out either. Um, also really interesting. This, this is cool. Um, it's not recognized as, as income at all to the IRS. Okay. So for instance, if you were using this as a college savings fund, okay, you could start an IUL for a child when they're born, let it grow for 18 years, OK, just take out policy loans uh, for the for the kids college uh, um, uh, in, um, college Fun. tuition. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, and all of that is totally fine. There's there's no rules against it. And let's just say the child gets scholarships and doesn't need any uh, any uh, income to be able to take out for for tuition. Um, you could just give it to them. You could just let them have the money uh, or you could keep on letting it say uh, save up for her or his house, or his retirement, or whatever they want, because you can use it for whatever you want. There's no rules or restrictions at all, unlike a 529 plan or mm-hmm. things like that. Um, also, because it's not recognized as income, again, um, many people don't realize that Social Security, if you make too much income, can be taxed. Uh, and of course, this would not count as income. So it wouldn't affect the Social Security. Also, Medicare, um, the, the fees, uh, uh, monthly fees for Medicare, mm-hmm. that's again, if you make too much income, it will increase the amount that you have to pay for Medicare. This again doesn't affect that. Um, also, of course, another pro is you do have a death benefit. I mean, it is an insurance policy. So if you die during this, while, while you still have cash value, you're going to have a death benefit you can give to your loved ones tax free. So if you leave your loved ones a a IRA or something like that, they're going to have to pay taxes on it. But you don't have to on a life insurance policy. So it's all tax free. Also, this also has living benefits. If you were to come down with a chronic illness, a terminal illness, 
something where you had to get medical attention that you couldn't afford. You can take out any, any loan anytime you want and be able to pay for living benefits then. Use it then. Also, um, you can also fund anything you want. You can buy a house with this. You can buy whatever you want. It's all your money. So it's extremely liquid. So there's a lot of benefits to this. And remember, all the money that comes out is tax-free. So it's yeah. it's pretty cool. Now, the cons. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite um, uh, curious about this. Do yeah. you have any, any idea of uh, how much is this uh, vehicle used? Uh, oh, well, it's a very good question. It's it's actually used a lot more by affluent people. OK, and right. it's actually a lot of people call it the uh, the uh, rich person's Roth IRA because okay. Roth IRAs are not able to be used by anybody who who's married and make wakes over two hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. So tell so, me without cutting you off, um, is, is there when you when you say rich, is there a minimum in order to 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 be able to afford those kind of policies? No, but so of course. Why would it be um, kind of um, labeled as a, a rich person? Um, a lot of people who don't make that much money would go ahead and use a Roth IRA instead. Okay. And they may not have enough money to be able to contribute to a 401k that they get matching funds mm -hmm. and a Roth IRA and still have money to be able to contribute to an, uh, a retirement plan. So, uh, that's, that's the reason so why. You, and uh, of course, since it's a life insurance policy, they would also be subjected to, um, um, to underwriting, right? That's, that's exactly true. Okay. It, the more healthy you are, the cheaper the death benefits would be. And that means more of the money would be able to use, be right, used for the, the yeah. for, in the in the in the cash uh, cash value. Yeah, value and make, yeah. and it makes your retirement better. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so over to the cons. <laughs> right. Going on to the cons. Here we go. Uh, the first one is it is a long term commitment. You can't start taking loans out uh, at the very beginning because you wouldn't have enough of your cash value in there. It takes a good fifteen years before you really need to start using it. Obviously, you could put as much as you can in there as you're going, and you're again to to lower the fees. You just take the lowest death benefit possible according to what is allowed, because uh, in order for it to stay as a insurance policy, it has to meet a minimum okay amount uh, uh, for for death benefit. Otherwise, it becomes what is called a a, a MEC or a modified endowment contract, and then you wouldn't have all of these benefits that are associated with a life insurance policy. Um, so it is a long-term uh, commitment. It takes at least 15 years to, to really start being able to take out the loans and be able to start seeing some of this value. Uh, the second thing uh, that's a con is you don't want to get with an agent that doesn't know how to structure this uh, because the fees can be really big. Uh, you don't want to get into something that has a large fees because you know, obviously, some insurance agents would possibly take advantage of you because if they if you get the death benefit too high, the commission for the insurance uh, agent can be pretty big. So instead, get it, make sure it's structured as low as possible for the death benefit. That is where almost all the fees go. And if you do it like that, it becomes very affordable. And of course, then you get all the benefits too. Okay. okay. And I, and, and, I could see that because of the, I guess, uh, the whole underwriting situation, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and just remember, the insurance company is is wanting those high fees because they don't want to pay large death benefits. I mean, they obviously they're they're in the business to make money, and uh, and so they're not going to just give away money for nothing. And, and if you're wanting a high death benefit, they're going to take a big fee. So you really want to have the fee the the death benefit as low as possible, and that way you'll reduce the fees as much as you can. Totally. Um, now, now, do you have performance risk? Yes, you do, because you cannot guarantee that the markets are going to go up. For instance, if you look at the Great Depression, OK, how many times were there negative years? Well, there were negative years. OK, mm -hmm. more negative years than were positive years. Those years you would not make uh, any interest. You would have zero percent. Now, you wouldn't lose any principal but you also wouldn't make any interest either. And so that's that's one thing. Um, also, uh, there is interest rate risk, but that's a very small thing. And again, it's, it's, it has 
very little to do with the con there. So I, 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 I almost didn't even put that included there. Uh, but, but the main thing is to understand that if you can get this structured correctly, it is something that is affordable fee wise, and it is something that gives you a lot of benefits. And so it's something to look at that people I think just don't even know about. Right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. I mean, that is, um, I'm glad that you are you're able to explain those um, those components because, and I guess that's where the common person get stung uh, by because, you know, someone would oh well I want a huge death benefit, so the 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 life agent will go along with you and say okay fine if you want that that that's how much it's going to cost, and of course clearly as the years go by your cash value is not really growing. Yeah. And uh, the way that they sold you the product being such a great one. But it, 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 it's clearly it all boils down to the structure. How mm. is that product structured? You know, and one thing, too, I mean, whenever I talk about lowering the death benefits, you know, you might be saying, well, I won't have enough insurance. Well, the cool thing is you can always buy term insurance. Yeah, so, that, yeah. Is, yeah. that You know, if you buy term insurance when you're young and healthy, it's dirt cheap. You know, you, you know, I just, the other day I, I quoted a guy for a million dollars of, uh, of, uh, uh, term insurance. He was 35 years old and it was $40, $40 <laughs> for a million dollars yeah. of coverage. Yeah. And it was for 30 years too. So uh -huh. we cover him till he's 65. So he doesn't have any kids whenever he's 65, his house is probably paid for. Uh -huh. And so you don't have to worry about the death benefits as much, but this policy does have death benefits. So it would still provide you something yeah. for the rest of your life after that. Again, it's, 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 it's all about your, your whole financial plan, right? the various component of it. I mean, this particular product, while it is it is a life insurance policy, um, does not really, uh, it's not, um, from what I understand, it's not recognized for protection. It's more for investment. Mm -hmm. That's you know, right. To, to, to make it um, simple. So thank you so much, um, Eric, for enlightening us on this um a magical pro product called Indexed Universal Life. Okay, so I am going to wind down and sum it up a little bit. Believe it or not, um, we are over the, the half hour. Uh, but today, uh, you define what that is, that um, IUL or Indexed Universal Life. Then uh, you talked about the whole indexing uh, uh, mechanics. And uh, you also um, explain the pros and cons of this uh, hybrid product. And I'm saying hybrid because it, it has an insurance component and an investment component. Okay. So I would also add that um, according to the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, uh, Index Universal Life Insurance uh, have several other features. And you, you did touch on, on, on some of them, but um, the, for, for example, the adjustable premium payments, right? And of course, within limits. And your policy will likely um, specify a planned premium for you. However, if you have enough money in your cash value account, you may be able to use those funds to help pay for premiums going forward, right? Uh, it also, another, another feature is the fact that um, that the um, death benefit could be adjusted, right? And so death benefits are typically typic, typically flexible um, with uh, IUL, right? And you can um, easily, uh, I would say usually, uh, lower them at any time. However, increasing the death benefit <laughs> may require you to, to be um, under, you would have to have um, some medical examination done and you of course and you have to pass them too right and uh, the last one that you mentioned which is the access to the cash value um, which is a good feature to have because in case of an emergency for example you may be able to borrow for um, from your IUL um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> oh my god although you will likely be charged interest for doing so right uh, so it's not a, a straight shoot. That's my money. I'm I'm borrowing against it, and I won't have a. Uh, um, I won't be paying any any interest. Yes, you will. 
and uh, and you may also be able to make withdrawal from your um, cash value account. However, doing so may permanently, I would say, reduce your death benefit, as you explained. And if you don't maintain a large enough balance in your cash value account, uh, withdrawal may also risk um, uh, causing your policy to lapse. That's right? true. And all of this can be done. Uh, you can see this through hypotheticals if you get with an agent mm -hmm. so that they can anticipate how much you're going to be paying, you know, and when you start paying fees. And, and so that the, the fees as the account, uh, as the death benefits go up, like you were talking about, they will be paid more whenever you first started it when you're young. Mm -hmm. That's why most of the fees are paid in the first 10 years or so. Right. So that they so that your val the, the amount that you're paying as you get older. Uh, it won't be that high right. and you'll you'll be able to maintain the the, the, the uh, product right. and you'll be able to still withdraw money for retirement. Totally. Yeah. So as I see it, IUL is a type of insurance, okay, that creates a reserved a reserve based on projected earnings, right? Of your investment. And one of the key benefits um, is that the rate are fixed, meaning that the policy never change. Right. Um, is that fair to say? Um, this brings us to um, uh, the end of the show today. It's already 36 uh, after the, the hour. Uh, and before I forget, Eric, um, could you tell the audience uh, how to contact you if they, if they wanted to? I also have a banner that shows your information. So I'm, going to, I'm also going to display that. Um, so let's see if I could show it here. Is that, yeah, that's yours. Yeah. So, um, it's, the uh, Eric's information is showing. Okay. And so I hope that you have enjoyed, enjoyed today's show about, uh, IUL, which stands for indexed universal life. And this is an insurance policy, and um, and um, Eric uh, explained how it can be used as a retirement tool. So, and as we learned today, um, those products can be very, very helpful when structuring your um, your retirement and when you are looking to preserve your golden years. So, I trust that you will consider such a product as a tool for, <clears throat> excuse me, your retirement planning. And if you have any further questions uh, or comments for that matter, please contact Eric. His information is, is calling under the screen. And as you know, I like to end the show uh, with a quote. And today's quote is from the great George Foreman. And it reads, the question is not at what age I want to retire. It is at what income. So thank you, Eric, for your awesome contribution to the show today. Uh, we will meet again very soon. Uh, I think I, I will probably have you on next week since we are on the roll with, um, with retirement products. So um, we will be looking at um, some other retirement products. I may make that little series on, on, on retirement. Okay. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you next, um, next week as a, a guest on the show. And for more information about how to achieve financial wellness from the inside out and live a purposeful life with the money you have, join me next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Mountain time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Atlantic time for my Bermuda, Bermudian pips, 11 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia time for my Australian friends. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now.